The moment you eat bread, you must first digest. The digestion of starch breaks it down into maltose. Then it will be broken down further to glucose. That sugar you eat will then be absorbed. How are you going to absorb it? You're going to take it all the way through the small intestine. Where is it going to go to? It's going to go to your bloodstream. Now, you have to stress here, because the question says explain everything, you have to stress on the fact that you really need that digestion. The digestion is necessary because if starch stays as it is, it would never be absorbed. Starch is way too big and you need to turn it into small, soluble, polar glucose. Three things are necessary here to be mentioned. The fact that glucose is small, so it can get into your bloodstream. The fact that the glucose is polar means it's going to dissolve in your bloodstream. And the fact that it can get from your intestine, where do you store your sugars? You're going to take those and store them right here inside your liver. So this is one option. It's written there in the question that you can store in the liver. That's glycogen. Why storing glucose in glycogen is such a great advantage for us? Because glycogen is the complete opposite of glucose. It's large, so it's going to be locked inside your cells. It's going to be insoluble. Insoluble means it's not going to affect the osmotic pressure of your cells. You know, like with glucose, storing glucose, it would attract water into the cell. But glycogen, just like starch, is insoluble. Then you have an option. Obviously, if you're hungry, if you're lacking energy, you may also turn that glucose into source of energy. You release ATP as glucose then respires. In brief, so I'll start starch, glucose, then I'll talk about possibilities now to turn that into glycogen and into energy. On the way, I'll keep explaining because the question says explain. So here I'll talk about glucose's properties being polar, small, soluble, which is all necessary for its transportation. And here I'll talk about properties of glycogen being the complete opposite, so you can lock it inside this cell. Something also is worth being mentioned is how does glucose going to be in and out of the cells? Because glucose must be transported. The way glucose will be transported here is going to be facilitated diffusion. They tell me, like, why is it not, like, active transport? The reason is facilitated because when you eat carbohydrates, you would expect to have high concentration of glucose outside your cells, then inside the cells. Your blood will be very rich with glucose. So facilitated diffusion is the way to move glucose down concentration with a carrier protein like the one I have here. Carbohydrate metabolism involves the breaking down of carbohydrates using enzymes by hydrolysis. Starch is broken down into maltose and then into glucose. You may mention the name of the enzyme, but it's not very necessary because that's not the aim here. Starch is being insoluble. It cannot be moved inside your blood, right? It's insoluble and it's big, opposite of glucose. Glucose is the soluble version of carbohydrates. Carbohydrate transport occurs when glucose passes into the blood by as I said, facilitated. Facilitated requires a carrier protein. Why did I pick facilitated? Because it's from high to low concentration. As you can see, every time I write a point, I am explaining this point. Glucose is soluble, so it's going to dissolve in your bloodstream. Being polar, then it would get around your body through mass transport. Why mass transport? Because that's how materials are transports it around your body. That's the definition of mass transport. It is when soluble materials in your blood are pumped from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. And why organisms like us require mass transport? Because we have limitations of diffusion. We're way too big. We have small surface area to volume ratio. In cells, glucose then enters by facilitated carrier protein. Now note, I've repeated this twice. You don't have to because you already mentioned, but I'm showing you all possible marking points. 
can be used to release energy or because it's carbohydrate inside the cell, it may also be used on the cell surface membrane because we have something on the cell surface membrane known as glycoprotein. When it gets to the liver, it would turn to glycogen and glycogen storage is necessary because it's meant to maintain homeostasis, to maintain constant blood sugar. But how do we turn glucose to glycogen? This is done by condensation reaction. Glycogen is insoluble, so it's safe to be stored. Why is it safe? Safe because that would not attract water. That would not change the osmotic pressure of the cell. What if you get hungry later on? What if you had this meal in the morning and you got hungry by midday? You can break down that glycogen when you have low sugar level. And again, I wrote every single possible marking point you're only meant to write like eight key points of these and you would score those six marks